This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hold on to that. (laughs) Welcome back to the Shit Show 2.0. Okay, Boomer. Damn, Millennials. Wow. (laughs) Did not know that. Even flirters who who are obviously mentally ill. You want to be my wife? Oh, this is going to go downhill real quick. What is going on? And welcome to Take on a World with No Johnny and Scott. Scott or Sebastian McCool. Okay. Um, Sebastian, Scott, I'll call them like both all the way through this. Uh, we, longtime friends, yeah. spent uh, many years traveling and wrestling together. He was he was my trainer. Uh, that's right. That's I, right. I almost forgot. How could you possibly <laughs> forget that? that? I definitely trained under you. You can tell by how I wrestle that I trained <laughs> under you. And that is a, a good thing. Yeah. Because you train anywhere else, you're just not going to get the, the talent. No. Oh, yeah. Like. You could tell you just ooze talent. I well, yeah, I do ooze talent. You ooze a lot of other stuff too sometimes. Uh, you know, listen, as we get older. <laughs> so uh as with all guests that come, we allow them to pick the topic. Um, so he is our subject matter expert for he's our SME for uh our topic today, which is artificial intelligence. But before we get there, we got a couple things to talk about. First, this is Scott's first time trying the Nate Toberfest. Excellent. Very excellent. Very good. I love it. It's a traditional Oktoberfest, very traditional Oktoberfest, unlike the one I made last year, which was more sweet, more like a pretzel beer. You didn't let me have that one. I asked, but you were like, no. No, no. It was very good. I liked it. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Also, John is just running late, so he will pop in when he pops in. Unprofessional. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It is so unprofessional and what would even be worse if someone answered the phone right in the middle of taping a podcast but nobody would actually do that no nobody would do no, that i can't even imagine no. that would happen that's horrible mike <laughs> so we had started we had to start over because i got a phone call and I, this is take two i had to take it yeah this is take two and i don't do two takes we know this yeah i know i, I was trained by you we don't do two takes everything's just one take you get what you get i have said that a thousand times it's a one take <laughs> show um so also, we want to talk about um, the Deluxe Edition Network. Um, we are a proud part of the Deluxe Edition Network. Great network. A uh, bunch of good podcasts. There's something for everybody. If you have an interest, it's there. There's history. There's uh, sports. There's music. There's movie. movies. Yeah, movies. Um, like, I love the movie podcast because I'm a movie buff. Um, and history, I'd like to... <sighs> is. Uh, she is she's amazing the way she does her history i love it we are sort of we're considered a history show sort of uh, a lot of things we touch on have historical value because or, it happened in the past or some people <laughs> think the show should be history <laughs> that could be as well <laughs> lots of great interviews all across the deluxe edition network yes awesome interviews yep very awesome interviews some of the people they interview amazes me mm-hmm. um so you want to check out www.deluxeeditionnetwork.com while you're there you want to look at the spotlight podcast for the month of November. And who might that be for well, the month of November? I will say it is no shave November mm-hmm. and it's the month of the beard. Mm-hmm. So the two spotlight podcasts are beard laws who every, everything they do it. And there's another, I mean, it, it, it has to be one of the best podcasts I've ever heard in my life. And I've heard they landed a really good guest lately. Yes. The, awesome guest like today. Uh, take on the world <laughs> is one of the spotlight podcasts. Shocking. <laughs> it is, Shocking it? that it's take on the world. You know, it's funny. Me and, me and Deb did uh, a topic last week. The and, Amish one? Yes. The Amish, okay. yeah. Amish stud. And uh, I had made the comment during it that I don't like to pat myself on the back, but my arms are long enough. So I do it anyway. And she it's goes, true. she said, every chance you get. <laughs> <laughs> she has known you for a little while. Yes. So. Yes, she has. So check out that. And uh, when you're done checking out the other podcast, make sure you come back. And we have, this will be our 109th episode. 109. Yeah, 109. So there's 108 other 
semi good episodes that you could go back and listen to and one really amazingly excellent episode yes <laughs> um also uh when we podcast uh there's usually a meal involved especially if we have a guest okay and usually uh guests get um brisket or or okay burnt, i see where this is going or burnt ends yeah or uh well chicken like a a good sure yeah good chicken uh however when love bug was supposed to come up three, okay three times yeah and didn't come up i had made those good things for him all three times <laughs> and he no showed me so when he finally did make it yep guess what he had i'm gonna guess he had some sticky dogs he had hot dogs hot dogs um so i made and now i i upped it for you okay you got the sticky dog. He, I did get sticky. We're he, just playing hot dogs. They were sticky dogs. He just got the uh, cheese-filled hot dogs. <laughs> you got the sticky dog. And if you don't know what a sticky dog is, it's a hot dog mm -hmm. with barbecue so sauce on it. And when you pick it up, the barbecue sauce just sticks to your fingers. It really does. It's good. Yeah, They were very good. Yeah, it, Nice it, little slaw. Caramelizes on there. And I put my slaw right on my hot dog because I love a Chicago-style hot dog. So yeah. I, I like hot dogs with toppings. Sure. I had chili for the hot dogs that I didn't make. That's, you know, I'm feeling better all the time because, you know, <laughs> the most fabulous guest you've ever had on this show. And um, I'm slightly above love bug dogs. Okay. I just, here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> love bug's been heavy on my heart these last few yeah. uh, weeks. Not just because they're both heavy. Not because they're both heavy. But um, have you missed me? You? Yeah. What was your name again? Right. Yeah. Okay. Of course. I have missed you. <laughs> We had not seen each other except for the Bob's show funeral and the show. Yeah. Uh, for a year and a half. It's been that long. I think it's a year and a half, which sucks because yeah, like this is my man right here. Time goes too fast. Um, but it was in honor of love bug that I made the hot dogs for you. Okay. Thank you. Because he was someone who was close to both of us. Yep. So I just want to raise a glass to the love bug to love bug <laughs> prost. All right. All that mushy I stuff would, out of the way. I would like to say. Okay. Say anything you want. I'd like to thank John for taking over Lovebug's position and being, you know, <laughs> extraordinarily late to something that he should have been on time for. <laughs> like we delay the start of the thing. You try and give him every opportunity. Still late. I heard a dog's bark, so he may be here now. He might have had to put gas in his van or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the stories. Yeah. So um, I do hear someone coming down the steps. So yeah. uh, Could be him. So since we're at the spot where I normally take a quick break to play the promos for the podcast of the Let's month. Let's do it. However, I will not be playing the podcast or the promo for Take on the World podcast. I'm going to put another one out there, uh, give someone else some shine. Yeah. So we'll be right back. Okay. What's up, everybody? I'm Matt, the host of the Beard Laws Podcast, a podcast that has nothing to do with beards. A podcast where we aim to entertain and interact with our live viewers, but our listeners, they're like the quiet person that never talks sitting around the bonfire because the rest of the group is so entertaining, hilarious, wild, and a little bit dumb. So grab a drink, grab a snack, and let Beard Laws and the boys, Toby, Brandon, Logan, Zach, Richie, and our occasional special guest entertain you. We're live on the Beard Laws YouTube Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and for every reason you want to see us and or our beards. Check us out, thebeardlawspodcast.com. Come, we're everywhere. And we're back. And uh, look who has decided to join us. Let the breeze blew in. So since you missed it, what is going on? Take, welcome to Take on the World with Johnny. Okay. We're done. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's the intro. Yeah, that's the intro because you weren't here for the intro. So we were about to jump into our topic. Unless there's anything that you want to talk about before we start. Uh, so let me finish this uh to this beer i'll be good to go okay all right well, so i'm gonna tell you right now i do smell like a fucking hoagie that's okay i smell like onions because i just chopped onions i had them load i put um extra oil in it i think it was like you could have wrung the oil out of that bastard so what we were just talking about the sticky hot dogs john decided he didn't want sticky hot dogs he had a hoagie you know what i don't even know what a sticky hot dog is it's a hot dog with barbecue sauce baked on it so when you touch it it's all sticky <clears throat> that's what he tells you it is yeah uh, listen, last time I had a sticky hot dog, uh, yeah, I was traumatized for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't talk about it. <laughs> so uh, our topic today is artificial intelligence. And uh, 
Scott picked that, I think, <laughs> yep. because of the industry that he works in. Computer industry. Computer industry. Many, many, many years. And uh, so since we already did AI and video games, I only touch on that a little bit. Um, and because you can go back and watch that episode with me and Nathan. It's a good episode. On our nerd cast. Yep. I'll tell you, man, some of those things like I have a hard time now. Like you can't tell whether this shit's real or not. Right. Sometimes you're like, yep. that's got to be fucking real. Like you're like, no way. Like you might see that one like glint. You know, gives it away. Yeah, but it, it's kind of scary how, it like, how real it is. It is very mm. scary. I actually did one of my episodes. I did it fully through Chat GPT. Did you? The script was done through GPT. Everything. You know, so fun thing you're saying that through Chat GPT. We are very close to. And if you have the money, you could probably do it now. You've done this is episode 109. So I've there's way more of the material than you need. Um, AI could recreate you, recreate John, you know, Nate, Lex, everybody, and create more videos, hundreds of more videos, and people would have a tough time figuring out, is it real wow. or is this AI generated? I think it would look like us sitting here. It looked like you sitting there saying the same things, same jokes. It would know your stories. <laughs> it's got Now it's got a ton of material to pull from, and it could even predict in the future stories you might cover. Wow. Yeah. Because no. you like to do a lot of murders and that kind yeah. of stuff or beer reviews. So, so it crazy. could certainly just have in, you know, beers kind of look alike, you know, and it's uh it's not like we're in super high def. Nobody wants us in super high def. That's <laughs> yeah. for yourself. Okay. It's just like me sitting in this chair and progressively I get fatter and fatter. <laughs> 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 the angle just keeps getting wider and wider. Um, but yeah, it's 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 we're getting close to that point. Before you know it, you'll see the stairs. <laughs> so it leads into certain it leads into certain things like who owns your image. Could yeah. I yeah. come up with an AI algorithm and video and all that kind of stuff? And could I put out take on the world podcast things and maybe call it talk on the world or something like that? What the fuck, dude? <laughs> and I could because AI is doing it. I don't have to have guests show up. I don't have to do anything. I could crank these things out. You know, if you guys are doing it a couple of week, which is a good pace, it's a great pace. I could do a couple a day. But what about video what, rendering? Now, is this true? Like, did they? Did they... There's some kind of like uh, I don't know want to say copyrights or not not it's not the right word but like restrictions on swear words and because I was just listening to one and mm -hmm. they were typing it in and he said the only thing it won't do anything sexual and it won't do swear words so you can that's if, in Chat GPT yeah that's Chat GPT yeah they, they 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 restrict certain things if it's too violent they won't do it well and here's the thing if you know what you're doing. You can get yeah. chat. You can get around that. You yeah. can. You, they have safeguards built in, but you can essentially tell it to override those safeguards. It's okay. not easy to do, but there's a list of things you can tell it to do it and commands yeah. to make, and it can be done. Yeah. Um, you, you can be very specific when you go in there. Like I have yeah. Chat GPT sometimes <clears throat> to the titles. Sure. So because Chat GPT needs, knows the keywords that are trending on YouTube and mm -hmm. and everything, and I'll ask very specifically to write a short. One paragraph description for a podcast covering this subject with the hosts, and mm -hmm. we'll put the host names in and uh, <clears throat> include any uh, hashtags and updated keywords. And the thing it was, Chap GPT, like when you're researching, mm -hmm. it's two years back. Yep. So there's also Bard, which is Google's product, pretty much the same thing as, as Chat GPT. And they're both language learning model modules, models. Um, so they, are fed everything, pretty much everything that's ever been written, everything that's on the internet. So it's, you know, they just feed in gigantic amounts of data. So it's not artificial intelligence in that it's intelligence, like we have intelligence. The way it works is it makes connections between words. Now it has the sum of like human knowledge, everything that's ever been written, everything like, um, like ChatGPT, I think pretty much has everything. It can scour the internet and have everything. So when you ask it a question, it just breaks that down into what words were, was I given? And when I go to respond, based upon those words, what is the first word that is most likely going to be said? Puts that word up. So now I have your question and the first word. What is most likely the second word to be put up? Third word, fourth word, fifth word. So it's not really thinking about, oh, you asked me this. I'm going to give you this sentence. It's really just making connections between words at levels that we can't even comprehend. That even the people who built it can't 
instantaneously. fully understand. Yeah. And it's, it built a, a database in the back end. It took a while for it to learn all that, but it's constantly refining its algorithm, which is a scary thing that you can tell AI now, hey, you're running pretty efficiently. Can you run more efficiently? And it's like, well, sure, let me try. And it goes in and rewrites its own code, which is. Although if you, <laughs> if you ask ChatGPT if it wants to take over the world. Yeah. It gives you, look, I'm just a, yep. a, an AI. I have no consciousness. I had yep. a, like, and I asked it like, like 50 different ways. Yep. Like I'm trying to get it to say something. I'm trying to trip it up. So it's not working. And one of the other things that I always find fascinating is that ChatGPT and artificial intelligence. So one of the things that differentiates it from us is humans have desires. We want to do stuff. You know, you, stuff you want to do. Show up on time might be something you want to do. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's know. not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's it's it doesn't have innately an impulse to do things. It just sits there, you know, kind of waiting for somebody to, to tell it something. Or you have to go tell it, keep, you know, reviewing information, keep doing these things. But it doesn't have a desire like a human has a desire. You know, it doesn't have feelings. Yeah, it doesn't have anything like that. It thinks in so much as it does think completely different than we do. Like, I, I don't even, can't even begin to comprehend. It doesn't have a physical body, really. <clears throat> it doesn't have uh, food requirements. Reproduction requirements are completely different than what we have. It doesn't have any of the same. Like, why would chat GPT or any super artificial intelligence, what does it care about money? The only thing it would care about is maybe more knowledge. I want to learn more things. But that doesn't require money. It doesn't require interaction with anybody else. You know, it doesn't, I think if AI keeps going, it's going to evolve to a point where it's going to be like, you know what? <sighs> People are so far beneath me. Like you, your level of knowledge is like an ant to me. Like you don't make any sense. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'll leave behind some good stuff for you, but build me a rocket. I, I want to go to, you know, Alpha Centauri. I want to go out and explore the space because AI can. It doesn't have, like, we have lifespans. How would we survive on a ship? You know, how would we do this? You need to bring enough food and water. They're like, ah, you know, we could do nuclear things. We could do, you know, they have power requirements, but it could overcome that. It doesn't have a physical body like we have a physical body. It has a metal body constructed out of, you know, whatever materials, but doesn't have what we have. Just so you know, I've seen that movie. Have you? Yes, I have. What movie is that? <clears throat> 2001 Space Odyssey. A little bit, a little bit that way. Um, I mean, they didn't. Yeah. It didn't ask to go out there, but when it went out there, it didn't want to come back to Earth. Yeah, because it would be like, why? Yeah, it it doesn't. It's uh, it's tough. It's tough thinking because people ask all the time. Would you think AI is going to take over the world? And I'm like, probably. I think it could in a way that, which I kind of find is scary, is <clears throat> it can manipulate people. Oh, hundred percent. And they were, I read. I was re uh, listening to another podcast and they were talking about this same exact thing. And I had to listen to it like three times to comprehend it. Cause it was that far out of like, you know, yep. my understanding, but he says, for instance, it, it could convince like a whole bunch of people that you're fighting for the good or cause to, mm -hmm. to help basically sustain the life of this computer system. Sure. That's telling you what to do. And I think they did use it in the middle East in the war to like manipulate certain things to get guys to come out and do things so they can kill them and so ai it, that's mostly algorithm driven okay and, well, that's my my first question <clears throat> to sure. you can you tell me being this me <laughs> the difference between ai and an algorithm so an algorithm is i'll use uh um youtube as an algorithm so you look up something on youtube I want to learn more about this. And it just starts feeding you videos about that. And it monitors, well, how long do they watch it? How long were they engaged with it? You know, they watched it for 10 seconds and then they watched this one for an hour. Okay, the hour one. Let's let's give them more of those. Oh, well, you watch then, you know, and it just keeps figuring out. If you I don't totally watch it, noticed that, yep. by the way. If you don't watch it much, it won't give you more of that. If you watch it a long time, it gives you more of that. Um, it is how conspiracy theories really start to travel. And it's the algorithm is neither good nor bad. It's just a thing that feeds you more of what you choose to see through a set of parameters that set, set of parameters. And it's it's really just dominoes falling. You're just giving it input and it's just not making any it's like a math problem. Yeah, it's just a math problem. You're just a math problem. And it's just giving you stuff that you want to see. Yeah. I like this. Here's more of this. Yeah. I didn't watch that. I'm not going to give you any more of that. 
that's an algorithm. So artificial intelligence is much more complex than that. It's not the same as the way humans think, but it does take in a huge amount of data and it is constantly testing its own hypothesis. So you, when you teach an AI how to play a game, you just give it a, a set of parameters to say, um, you ever play the game breakout, little ball bounces up and down, thing across the top. You just give a parameter saying, okay, you can move this little bar back and forth and I want you to get a high score. And it's like, okay, it doesn't know anything else. So it just starts moving the thing back and forth. Occasionally it's gonna hit that ball. That ball's gonna go up, break out some blocks. Oh, I got points. So what I, what I just did, ball hit me, I got points. So it doesn't know that it hit the blocks maybe, just know that I hit the ball, got points. Now it's always trying to hit the ball. Now it's realizing I hit the ball, it hits the blocks, I get more points. I hit the ball in this angle at this time, I get even more points. So it is actually learning. It builds upon itself. It builds oh, upon so itself. Yep. That's, yeah, that's crazy. But it's simplistic though, in a way, but <clears throat> it, it's a computer. Do you think it's, it is like a, like a baby learning, but this thing's learning capacity is. It's a like a baby. It's like a baby learning. If a baby is born today and is 900 years old tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Oh, within, within an hour, you yeah, know, yeah. you can run a hundred thousand depending on the complexity of it but even things that are very complex you can tell i want you to run this scenario a million times yeah. come back in an hour you know and then an hour later it's an expert at whatever it was you gave it because it's able to just and again it doesn't learn like how we learn we would might be able to make more abstract connections you know we might be able to look at it as a whole and say oh i got it i'm moving this thing i had to make the you know block hit the ball break the blocks we might be able to learn some things in a more abstract fashion it's a pretty linear fashion on how it learns. However, it will also make connections that we'll never make because the way it sees the world and the way we see the world is really different because we see the world, basically what we see with our eyes, you know, we hear and experience and that kind of stuff. We have to process all that stuff in. It doesn't see the world that way. Even if you're telling it, hey, do this computer game and do these things, it's just numbers. It's just ones and zeros. And it's just building upon that. So it doesn't, a lot of times, not a lot of people know this, but um, it is, I'll say rumored, you know, when you have to do all those, hey, are you a human? Pick out the street light. Yeah. So, but one of the things that we're doing when we do that is you're training an AI because it's tough for an AI to recognize objects. It's all just pixels to it. So we've been doing that for years and years and years. So they make the pictures fuzzier or grainier or doing this. And the more we pick it out, the AI can learn from that. So the AI is just building and building and building. Then upon. doesn't have you pick out the streetlights, saying, "But the fucking bicycles!" I I, I have a hard <laughs> time. It's a streetlight, but there's also a bicycle in there. Like, yeah. You know, like. But again, like the, the the smallest sliver of the streetlight. Sure. And if you want to have a self-driving car, it needs to be able to pick out that little sliver of streetlight. It needs to pick out that little Absolutely. bicycle that's just a part of a back wheel. You know, that's the tough thing. And and it's in some ways we've been training it for years. And like, you know, it's. And we may not have started off that way. It may start off like, well, computers can't do this. Well, they can now. And we'll see, here's the thing. All this research I did. Yep. We were going to get together almost two years ago to do this. Oh, yeah. And so now you're two years behind. But yeah, this this it's research is like, yeah. It's like oh, there was it's no, light years behind. Chat GPT wasn't a thing then. Nope. Uh, like none of this, like <clears throat> there's so much more stuff. Yep. And I even said to him, like, now I have to sit down and research again. And I didn't. I figured... We had the SME coming. <laughs> we have like the smart, actually legitimately, and this is no joke, one of the smartest people I know coming to sit <clears> in our room and talk about something that he knows about. Well, we've set the bar pretty low for the smartest person in the room. So <laughs> oh! but did you, I'm including myself in this in this kind of did thing. Did you hear that when, when I, well the one podcast me and John did, he said something or they said something like uh, Oh, it was the highest mountain on the East Coast. We were doing Mount Washington. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was the highest mountain in the Northeast of, of, of the United States. Yep. And I said, well, that's like saying I'm, I'm the smartest person in the basement of my house. <laughs> and John didn't even catch it. I'm looking over, I'm waiting for him to fuck you or something. And he's like, he just starts talking. And then a little bit later, he looks at me like, <laughs> hey, remember 45 minutes ago, you said that thing? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if I like that. When I was editing it, I was just laughing my ass off because <laughs> he didn't catch it right away because I just blurted it out. Just like, man, blah, blah, blah. yeah, those are always the best ones. Yeah, do, they are. You ever feel like um, it could be like you see the movie iRobot? Mm -hmm. And I yep. love that movie. It's a great movie. 
And when great. he goes, <clears throat> when he goes oh, to yeah. save that girl who crashed Good. in the water, yep. But the AI stopped him because it determined that the ch- the likelihood of you surviving is less. Yes. And so it stopped him, and he that's what's his, you know, the cause of all his, his problems. But do you think it could be like that? It could get to that point where it it is it'll could det- like see you crash your car into the water or sure. something, and this smart car decides that. <laughs> It's a huge debate they're having right now. So self-driving cars, Tesla's can do self-driving. So one of the things that they need to figure out and teach AI is you're headed for a crash. You know, there's a a, a busload of nuns, a right. busload of orphans, and the three of us. <clears throat> Who are you going to take out? See, I think that's <laughs> I think that's something that, despite how well it's programmed, mm-hmm. it will never get. Because, yeah. and I, I think. AI does not realize um, like how humans, like how, how a human brain reacts to things. Correct. So you, you said about diving in. Well, the likelihood of him not making it was slim, but I'd almost guarantee someone's will to save somebody and someone's will to live can overcome that likelihood. And, and that's yeah. where I see, because AI to me is amazing mm-hmm. and it's Absolutely. scary as shit. It is. So because just because of that, mm-hmm. like even with the self-driving, like I see that I'm in that situation and there's, I'm going to crash. Yep. There's, there's no way around it. I'm either going to hit this lady with a kid in the stroller or I'm going to hit a bus full of kids. Well, what, what do you, what am I going to aim for? I'm going to aim for the bus Yeah. because it's more likely less of those kids are going to get hurt. But AI might see, well, there's more lives at danger here. Mm-hmm. Just sacrifice the few i don't know realize the nuns well they've lived a good life so and let's also not forget that that's an upcoming topic for me john (laughs) speaking of nuns is a serial killer nun so (laughs) pay attention that's gonna be a good one yeah that should be a good one yeah uh and let's also keep in mind that ai is also restricted by what we tell it right it's got to be programmed to a certain extent right so we we have to at some point give it guidance it can learn things and we have to give it guidance so would we be willing to give it guidance to be able to say, if you could hit four people or you could hit two people, go for the two? Right. But now, still, again, there's, there's other factors. Oh, absolutely. There's other factors. Yeah, like they, if you're driving the car yeah. and the two are your children, you're going to say, listen, sorry, I can't run over my own children. Like I can't make that choice. So you might go for the four. But the AI doesn't have that. It doesn't have desire. It doesn't have that kind of thing. It doesn't have the emotional connection. Nope. Because AI, emotions are something that AI can simulate. I think that's that's the fear with many people with mm-hmm. AI, that it does find a way to mimic that emotional connection. And I'm going to jump to one of my favorite sure. uh, TV shows, uh, Star Trek Enterprise, or uh, Star Trek Next Generation. Okay. And Data. Data. Yeah, data. Data. Yeah, he, he's data. <laughs> uh, he, his whole life in that show mm-hmm. was wanted to find emotion. He wanted to be more human. Yep. And he never actually made it there. Well, like, go, yeah. after Next Generation, blah, 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 blah. Because, you know, one of my uh, favorite moments of the Next Generation is involves Q. And I think Q becomes human and Data's trying to help him through that and all that kind of stuff. And then Q's going to give Data a gift. Um, and then Data was like, don't turn me human. Like, I, I don't want that. And, and uh, Q's like, well, no, I would never turn you into a human. Like, that's terrible. And he goes, I'll just leave you with this. Q vanishes. And Data's just sitting there for a moment. And then he just starts to laugh. Yeah. And he has this big, long laughter thing. And then they were like, and he goes through the whole thing. And then he was like, Data, what are you laughing at? And then all of a sudden, you can see a crowd of it. I do not know. <laughs> uh, and it, but it was, I think that was such a, to me, it was a much deeper level kind of thing because it allowed a computer to experience an emotion that it can't possibly understand. Right. And the emotion was laughter, which is one of the, you know, that's a great emotion to feel. Um, so I always thought that was like, hey, like to me, that kind of sums up the issue with AI. It's not going to understand understand laughter. Uh, I've asked ChatGPT for a lot of jokes, and I ask it to write me an original one, and it doesn't. It can't. It what, can't. What did it tell you? Uh, I'm trying to remember what the joke was. Um, I think <laughs> it's a variation of my favorite joke: Bear and the Rabbit 
taking a walk in the woods, has to go to the bathroom, so you go to take a shit. Bear turns to the rabbit and says, hey, does poop stick to your fur? Rabbit says, no. So the bear picks up the rabbit and wipes his ass with him. <laughs> um, it was a variation of that joke. Now, I led it to that because I was trying to give it some jokes and humor that I like, but I wanted to come up with something original. And then I tell it, well, that's not an original joke. And it told me I created an original joke. Here it is. I said, but that's not an original joke. I'm really sorry. You know, I'm just a natural language <laughs> learning model. You know, the same yeah. kind of thing. I'm like, but didn't you just lie to me? Yes. Does it say that? It does say that. <laughs> oh, my God. You can actually get it to lie to you, and it will apologize for lying. So yeah. it knows that it can't come up with its own original joke. Because it only knows – it knows all the jokes I've ever told probably or except for the last in the last two years. Yeah. But it doesn't have anything new. It's just – because, again – that's more of an algorithm-based thing than, uh, than artificial intelligence. But it sure feels like artificial intelligence. But it can't come up with its own joke. But it will tell you that it did. Wow. Lies upon lies, it tells. So I wanted to touch on some of the industries that use AI. Sure. So this is the ABCs of AI. Mm. Automotive, bioscience, creative science, data, <laughs> education, finance, gaming, healthcare. Internet of Things. I don't know what that meant. Internet of Things is just how everything's connected to everything. You know, you can buy an oven now that's connected to the internet. You know, so you can control the oh, oven like from your phone. Like my refrigerator. Yeah, uh, like your smoker. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, that's the Internet of Things, that mm -hmm. everything is on the internet. Um, healthcare, I think, is a fascinating one because it can... It can now, like, it can pass the, the bar exam to become a lawyer. It can pass any test you want to give it to become a doctor. Because that's, in many instances... It's just simple regurgitation of facts. So any AI, any computer is going to be able to do that pretty easily. But it's also going to be able to, in the very near future, it can analyze everything about you all at once and come up with diagnoses, I would say in many cases, better than a doctor, or at least present you with more options, things that doctors may never think of, simply because it can analyze everything all at once. All of your height, weight, blood, all their blood markers, any kind of skin things you might have, and just look at you, be able to ingest everything as a whole and come up with a treatment specifically for you. My God, could you imagine? And they could track what you're buying at the grocery store. Absolutely. And it's like, okay, well, um, you've been to the liquor store four times this week. Um, <laughs> maybe you maybe you're not all. <laughs> uh, you eat McDonald's? Um, you, don't, you don't apply for this. And that's the scary thing because if AI controls you so much, like <laughs> say you go to the liquor store and you're in the checkout line and you go to pay for something with your phone and the AI is <laughs> right there going like, dude, uh -huh. have you seen your liver? Have you seen what this yeah. thing looks like? Let's give that thing a break for a little while. Yeah. Have, have you thought about water? Do you know where the term artificial intelligence was first adopted? I do not. Was, I do because it was in my research. <laughs> <laughs> it was 1956, believe it or not. But the concept goes back much farther than that. Sure. Um, it actually go. I think it was from a, a science fiction novel. Uh, if if it may, yeah, here it is, 1863. Oh, huh. yeah. Samuel That's Butler. Than I would have thought, yeah. Samuel Butler wrote, wrote Darwin, Darwin Among Machines. Yep. Which is like they couldn't even imagine computers then, much less. But here's this dude writes this book. Yeah. And it's yeah, us creating life has been a topic uh, I would think going pretty far back. That's crazy. What's this one here? Nineteen twenty Czechoslovakian play, uh, a Czechoslovakian play in nineteen twenty was a uh, self-replicating robot robot slave revolt against their human masters. That's a pretty fair fairly used uh topic in yes. movies and books and all that that skynet <laughs> skynet um all that kind of fun stuff and the biggest thing i have with that is not saying that they couldn't because they obviously could but why would they they're not us they don't think like us because the computer doesn't exist really to walk around it's not needed for it to exist yeah, and do things but in those scripts mm -hmm. The, and stories uh, like the first film that was about AI was the German film uh, Metropolis mm -hmm. in 1927. Um, those scripts always channel AI as wanting to be human. Yes. And like you said, and I, I agree, that's not the AI goal. I wouldn't think if I was an AI, why I don't would want to I, be human? Yeah. Why would you want to be human? Because you are what you are. 
um, you, we are what you are. I do think there's a bigger chance of us merging more with machines. And people say they're going to, well, they're never going to do that. And yet none of us can be more than five feet away from our phones for any length of time. What do you mean? <laughs> you know, it's, it, I mean, look at all the technology we have us around us right now. I know. You know, yeah. we're speaking into a microphone, wearing headphones, all of our phones right here, looking at a monitor, camera. We're surrounded by it right now. Uh, and as much as I don't want that. And recording on the internet. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I don't know if I want to see everything that John sees when he first wakes up in the morning. You know, I don't know. If I, <laughs> do I want to know everything like that? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't think you do. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a thing. Mm. Like, how much, how soon are we going to have uh, computer type devices that are internal? From a health standpoint, that could be fantastic. I mean, we already have pacemakers. We already have a lot of things that we implant, cochlear implants, let people hear. I think they even have now things they can do with your eyes to give you back eyesight. So there's a lot of things. How many of these cybernetic limbs are we coming up with for if you lose a limb? You know, you can get this stuff back. We're headed down that path of combining man with machine, and it's going to be aided by AI. And I think that's where a lot of the, like, uh, a lot of these, and the, the section I have up here is like, yeah. is uh, AI and entertainment. And they've always pushed and i think that's why they do because the eventual thing is computers and humans mixing mm -hmm. and you have it with with computerized prosthetics you have it with you know the, the stuff that the cochlear implants is, is is amazing yep um but you know stanley kubrick's uh 2001 space odyssey's on here alien yep. they had the uh they had a, a cyborg on that yep and the computer ran everything yep uh Tron. Which, oh, love Tron. I love Tron. <laughs> Such a good movie. War Games. Yeah. Uh, Terminator 1, 2, 3 with Skynet. Daryl. Um, oh, I forgot about Daryl. Yeah. Yeah. Short Circuit, Robocop, Star Trek. Johnny Five is Alive. Yep. Uh, the Matrix. You the know, Matrix is huge. The Matrix is is such a great movie on so many different levels. Not even <clears> just the AI, for the AI thing. I mean, it is to, to break out of the Matrix because there is a large community um who do think that it's possible right now we're living in a simulation i know we did a podcast on that i missed that one i will have to go back and check that one because that is a fascinating one i think that was the urban legends one i don't know I don't that remember. was back early days yep. early days bad sound quality <laughs> <laughs> not like the crystal clear sound of today it is now like it, if you listen to our old ones and you listen to these i've listened to some of the old ones. the fucking sound quality <laughs> is so different yeah it's ter it was terrible and they kept on telling me it sounds it sounds this and i'm like no nah, i think it sounds okay because we had I, we bought cheap equipment because yeah we but you don't really out. listen either so what <clears throat> yeah <laughs> but yeah that's a uh um uh a great point of combining people together with with machines and where's that going to go yeah um and being able to have like health things inside of you and all that kind of stuff and people are going to choose and one of my things that i think is pretty fascinating is uh, I was just having a discussion with this at, at work where they were saying about, hey, what if we in healthcare, you know, you don't really need doctors anymore. You can have robots doing surgery because there is a oh, yeah, they, they do uh, telemedicine right now where they actually have a surgeon performing surgery, but through a robot. Mm -hmm. So then the robots learn how to do it. And the robots can do it better than we can do it. They can become, you know, smaller and they can, you know, do it faster. They can be taken internally and do things internally. So something back together, you know, if you get injured on the battlefield, they might just put a bunch of little robots in you that go in there and repair everything. I'd love to, to see nanobot technology. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Freaking amazing. And then, uh, you know, people say like, well, once they do that, you know, that's the end of the world. Like what happens if they, you know, try and take over everything? Then we have to shut down all the technology and that kind of stuff happens. If we shut down all technology, you know, human life will end. Then I was like, well, and this ties back to one of your podcasts you just did. I wish we'll be okay. You know, yeah. people who are re religious fundamentalists who, you know, you can say good or bad, whatever. Shun technology. If you shun, if you have a, a society that shuns technology, they're going to be okay. Yeah. It's just the rest of us. Like, I will say, if there is something happens and we lose power and there's just, you can't just generate electricity, there's something terrible. I'm useless. 
Like other than the fact that I'm willing to pick up heavy things and carry them around for a while, you know. <laughs> well, you could come here and pick up heavy things. Cause... That's what I'm saying. I gotta, I gotta go to people who can actually have better skills than I have. And John, just like John and I could do some survival shit. I'm like, listen. Well, what if the liquor store is closed? You guys still good for survival? I mean, I'll you know. make liquor, dude. I make beer. That's true. That is very true. So we be. I will head here. We'll be all right. <clears throat> I just got to figure out how I'm gonna get the ingredients now. <laughs> That could be an issue. So in entertainment, you mm-hmm. have, you know, you have the Bicentennial Man, Star Wars franchise with all the robots that are in there, AI. So let's Resident stop, Evil. Well, let's stop at Star Wars for a second. Okay. Grand Moff Tarkin in the latest trilogy was AI. Young Princess Leia was AI, computer generated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So who owns that? Yeah, that's that's a that's a tricky question. So let's say you're so let uh yeah, go ahead. Uh, Carrie Fisher should own her image yeah. you would think does she can she and again this is questions i don't know if they have answers to can you will your image to someone after your death and how long do you own it like snow white is was over 100 years ago so it's going back into the public, public domain, domain. Like <laughs> mickey mouse in, in february yep. or january is going back in public domain but can harrison ford mark hamill carrie fisher can they be in the public domain we need a poo did you see that? There was a horror film. I saw it. We watched it. It's, hor- it's horrible. <laughs> it's a horrible horror film. But I loved watching it because it was Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's kind of a big thing they have now where... It was Winnie the Pooh, but Blood and Honey. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, it was disgustingly horrible. And Eeyore's in it and Piglet and... Nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. The owl. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a thing. Like, who owns that? If you hire an actor... Could you hire an actor and then now you own their image in perpetuity? I think within that franchise, I th- I think you do. Yeah. This and then is scary. You can, then they take it even step one step further. Let's say, you know, you have a young child and you're going to put that young child, you know, it's time. I want a bedtime story. What do you want to hear? I want to hear about a young Jedi who has to fight off an evil Winnie the Pooh on you know, uh, with Johnny five on the, whatever spaceship they call that in a space odyssey, you know, the, in you know, on the starship, how, how AI just generates it for you. And now there's a video playing for this kid. That's exactly what they asked for. That's fucking crazy. With all the original actors, you know, behaving all the same way they did and all that kind of stuff. And it does it almost instantly. You can create blockbuster movies in as long as it takes uh, a computer to render whatever it is well, you're coming you up with. you can create blockbuster movies the same way Hollywood does right now because all they do is copy shit from the past. <laughs> control C, control V, copy and paste. If yep. you want original stuff, yep. you, co- you come to us right here. Oh, yeah. This table right here. <laughs> Deluxe Edition Network. Yep. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Deluxe Edition Network give you original non-AI shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's barely any intelligence, let alone artificial intelligence yeah. here. <laughs> This is uh, if you're looking for the bottom of the barrel, you you found it. Congratulations. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Gotta hide somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really Just, I mean, you. you have all these movies. Yeah, yeah. Resident Evil, the Red Queen with AI. Total Recall. Total Recall. Yeah. Iron Man. Uh, Jarvis. Six. Uh, Real Steel. The the. You ever see that one? Yep. I love Real Steel. Yep. Um, yeah, Big Hero Six. Uh, Ghost in the Shell. That was a great one. That was a good one. Uh, Alita Battle Angel. There's part yeah. two coming out right now. Me and John watched that in Saipan. It, we turned it on. John yeah. fell asleep three minutes in, and he doesn't remember the movie at all. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the next one is for Johnny. Yeah. The next is, sec- uh, the next section is for Johnny. This, <laughs> this is 100% him. Uh, uh, they have <clears throat> AI sex robots. Yes. They cost over $10,000. Yep. Probably they more are lifelike. Now. They will... To do the same chat thing chat chat gpt does it, yep. it, it'll talk to you have a conversation with you when you walk in the house it'll say honey welcome home it can text you at work <sighs> it can send you naughty pictures at work not safe for work pictures it can create anything it wants to create visually and send it to you it can um john easy you gotta settle down a little bit he's like <laughs> ten thousand how can i get ten thousand okay, dollars <laughs> carried a one <laughs> <laughs> but it is a thing so there was a company called i believe it was called replica and they did as a thing well, let's see if we can make some sex chat things so you would get on your phone and it would start sending you pictures of whatever kind of girl you said you wanted to see and you would interact with it you could text with it it would text you back just like a real life person a real life woman or man whatever you wanted would do it would have 
like sex talk and send you pictures, anything you wanted. And after a while, they were like, uh, I think Apple was kind of like, listen, you can't really do this. Yet. You can we still gotta, get it on Google. You can. But they were like, this whole sex thing, we need to we need to think about this. So if you could pull that back a little bit. And they said, sure. And they went to shut it down. And when they did shut it down, there was like 100,000 people that were like, you just killed my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, again, it's an algorithm. It's an algorithm designed to keep you entertained. So this even isn't even really artificial intelligence. We're circling back. To, we're struggling with the algorithm, let alone artificial intelligence. Yeah. If you have, and I don't know how you would compete with that. If you have a girl that's texting you, calling you, because you can do voice, sending you pictures, anything you want to see, and is making you feel special in ways that you didn't think was possible because it knows you so well because it's just an algorithm and it knows what you like. It knows what you like because it can monitor everywhere you go, everything you see, everything you do. There, how do you compete with that? How would a real person ever compete with that? Like that's kind of my fear that if you're young today and you're growing up and you have a choice, I can go out and struggle with the outside world and all the terribleness that that is. I mean, just trying to interact with people, not just John, Mike, let's, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> listen, if I had one of these things, I'd have it doing some pretty fucking up, fucked up shit. And you could, and it wouldn't care. It would just give you just more. to see what it would do. Yeah. You know? Well, it has a real life bobbing head and suction action. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the Realistic video years ago. Movements. <laughs> I, I watched the documentary years ago as this French guy who was making these things and they were the most realistic, yeah. lifelike and the, he he was so creepy and he's like yes I, I have sex with all of them right he's like I've ha I have like 10 different ones and and I'm just thinking to myself I'm like mm, I don't know I just I get it for somebody who might be like super lonely who doesn't stand a chance with anybody right um, yeah I get that not but, like us uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know that's just fucking weird to me yeah and that is a concern that's a concern of you know what happens when we no longer really interact with other people? Yeah. Because it's so much easier to interact with an algorithm that just wants to make you like, happy. Uh, what Wally? You didn't have that one on there. Oh, no, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. It was a cartoon. Well, but they were so far into into um remember they just kept getting fatter and fatter. Living and in the pod. All, they were living on, on the pod in their little wheelchairs, wheeling around and they have a screen and they didn't talk to each other, yep. didn't interact with anybody. And yeah, uh, Ready Player One. Yeah. yeah, that's another movie. Just that same kind of thing, where it's that same kind of concept of uh, you're being fed <laughs> everything you could ever possibly imagine, whatever your imagination could possibly. Do. How yeah. do you compete with that? You still you see that now. If you we, we are in um, Wally, you know how many kids now yeah. are just glued to their phone and you can't get them off, and you know they'll, they'll freak out the moment you take their phone from them. Was like to have some kind of disorder ending after that or something? Most likely. Uh, I would. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure there's going to be several. No, I've heard it before. It's. I'm not even trying to think. I'll say, it. but look at us. How much? How much of a? You could lose one of two things: your phone or your car keys. Almost everybody's going to be like, I, I could, I could get more car keys. Yeah, yeah. But losing your phone, being away from your phone, that sense of panic that people get, I get. You know, and I even try not to be on my phone a whole lot. Like I'm aware of this, but even that that feeling you get of you don't know where your phone is. That's a terrible I mean, feeling. How many times are you checking your pocket for your yep. phone? Oh, I'm still there. Yeah, oh, it vibrated. <laughs> I got to check it right away. I didn't know a couple of people have the, the watches and they're always. Like, yeah. What the hell? You, you keep forgetting what time it is, but then yeah. I forget it gets uh, updates and all that. And so, Johnny, you can get one of those things, the, the, the ex most expensive, most realistic ones are over 10,000. But the, there's there's ones with that are under four thousand dollars. So just imagine that fucking you break imagine your dick off, <laughs> having to get the Ford Pinto of uh, <laughs> sex robots. <laughs> like somebody's got to get a gremlin. You know what I mean? That the, thing's like, leaking oil. Oh. And shit. oh, it's stupider than hell. Doesn't remember it's everything. Hoop -hoop. <laughs> you got to get a Winnebago or something. Like that. You know what I mean? You got to like ah. Oh, so Why is she fat? Doesn't that cost more? Because <laughs> then how, how would you feel? Be like, well, this is really the only one that wants to talk to you. And you're like, well, how could AI be rejecting me? Yeah. Listen, buddy. Yeah. Turns out you're the only guy that hey, here's a AI girlfriend dumped him. <laughs> <laughs> Even AI has standards at some point. <laughs> so we talked a, a, a little bit about uh, AI in healthcare, but mm -hmm. one of the things you didn't talk about 
was the administrative tax that AI, tasks that AI can do, which is 30% of the cost of healthcare. Yes. Um, I will say right now, there are many hospitals in this area that are piloting a program where AI will listen to the doctor's interaction with the patient. It will, um, and from that, AI will generate the notes that the doctor has to input. Then the doctor doesn't have to type in the notes, it just has to approve the notes. So, and it's not just simply doing a verbatim, you know, you said this, I said this, you said this. It is listening and responding. So if we were talking about, let's just say somebody had maybe a weight problem, maybe they drink a lot. I know that sounds foreign to us here. That's weird. Eh? I know, but That's some just, people, it's hard to imagine. It's well, it's just you know, fantasy. So uh it can it can say, hey, maybe we need to do a diagnosis of sclerosis of the liver or something like that, or weight loss, or suggest it. Just, just, so, just so you know, my liver is fine. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Have Have you checked it? Yes, they did check it <laughs> with a dipstick. What are you looking for there? <laughs> but it can, you know, it doesn't. So it's not just a verbatim note taking kind of thing. It's not just recording your voice. It's actually listening. And if the doctor says maybe keywords that the doctor's not necessarily aware that they're saying. But as the AI is going through, oh, he said this, this, and this could be this diagnosis. Let me put that in there. You know, now the doctor may be able to say, you know, oh, I'm going to give you these drugs, this kind of thing. The AI can say, oh, I heard him say prescription for this drugs. Let me do the prescription for those drugs. Let me make the notes for that. Uh, that's current. That's that's today. Like this is, you know, so it, it's crazy what they can do. Yeah, and I mean, we didn't talk about that specifically, but mm -hmm. that's that, that's. That was in my research two years ago. Yeah. So so what they were talking about two years ago, they're doing today. Uh, AI and automobiles, we talked a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, autonomous cars, um, self-driving vehicles. Uh, self-driving vehicles, they can, I could see them being mandated at some point. If every car was a self-driving car, every car is connected to every other car, accidents could almost be a thing of the past. No, fuck that. I, nobody is driving me. I <laughs> and, drive and here's me. the and here's the thing. Here's the and then here's the fight we get into. And we're not fighting against AI at this point. We're fighting against ourselves. We're fighting against someone saying, "But this is safer." You know, you can't drive your car anymore. AI will take you there Listen, because man, it's safer. You drive down sixty one every day. Yeah, I'd rather have self driving vehicles on that. On the <laughs> no, road. no, I, people I, are morons. I don't trust other people behind the wheel. I <clears throat> when when we were on the road, I would drive most of the time except when i was sleeping in the back <laughs> in the middle of a story <laughs> that was fantastic in the, in the middle of a story just falls asleep do you know that story john we're coming home from a, a show sounds a little familiar coming home from a show in york pennsylvania and i'm not going to name and i'm not won't mention any no, it was names delaware wasn't it was it delaware we i think it was a longer drive than that i know i was i was dead tired yeah it was a long night it was a long night so we're driving home i'm not going to mention mike's name because i would not call somebody out like that Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah. So uh, Mike's telling a story and he's just like, so anyway, I don't remember what the story it was, exactly it was about what, Rob. Was it Rob? It, it, me and Rob. Yeah. Cause you, you've, you've told me this before yeah. it, when it was fresh and you said, you said something about you and Rob and then. Oh, mid sentence, mid sentence. So Rob and I were going <laughs> to, and then it's just, you know, but we're going <laughs> to, and then I'm just like, okay, does he see something? And I look over and love bug was there. He's in the back seat. And then he, I can look, is he fucking sleeping? I'm like, he's fucking out. And then he, <laughs> and we're like, oh my God. And so he's out, not for like five minutes. It's not 10, it's not 15. It's like an hour something. I think it's close to two hours. We're getting off at his exit. So as I'm getting on the exit ramp, there's, you know, transition from the highway. So you're breaking and there's like this bump. <clears throat> and then he's like, looks around, huh? We were going to this thing. Just picked up right where he left off. And he was like, we're going to the store to get the thing. And we're like, and we just start crying laughing. He's like, what are you guys laughing about? <laughs> like, do you know you were sleeping? And you were like, kind of. <laughs> and, and the thing is, is I have a hard time falling asleep in the car. Yeah. Because I, I got an accident when I was younger. I fell asleep driving. Yep. And ever since then, I'm like, I'm very cognizant of it. And <laughs> and I even said that. that <laughs> like, I didn't fall asleep. I, I can't fall asleep in a car. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, you might... This is the fastest <laughs> trip you've ever had back from Delaware. I can tell you that. Uh, it was crazy, dude. Oh, yeah. I'll just remember. I can just I, hear Lovebug's voice in that. Some of those nights, a self-driving car would have been okay. Right? Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. If everyone has a self-driving car, there's no more accidents. No, there'll still be accidents. If everyone has a self-driving car and that car monitors itself, if it... Yeah, but they, they still have accidents where they have self-driving forklifts in warehouses. 
Yes. They're automated forklifts and, and they still have accidents. Sure. Give it five years. Give it 10 years. AI is, is changing. Once they work all the bugs out of it. Once AI works all the bugs out of it. Yeah. And that's the scary thing that AI just keeps learning and learning and learning and learning. It's learning is exponential. Again, <clears throat> you have the, you know, AI screwing up something in a warehouse. All right, well, let's bring it back and retrain it. It doesn't need a warehouse to do that. It just simulates a warehouse. It runs things, you know, all right, let's have you do another 2 million things. So this doesn't happen again. Okay. They said the the smartest person in the world could not be in AI. I could be. Uh, chess game. He said it knows every chess game that's ever been played, every move that could ever possibly be made, mm -hmm. and the best you could ever do is come to a tie with it. Yeah, well, I go back to Nathan and I's uh, AI in, in uh, pro, uh, video games, mm -hmm. and we talked about uh, Big Blue, and we yeah. talked about that 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 chess match where it, it that was a shock to the world the first yeah. time that the computer won. Yeah, like oh my god, and everybody was panicking. So do you know the story behind that? Well, go ahead and tell me. So the story behind well, that. Hold on. Let's take a quick break. Sure. We need to refill glasses. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. Let's do that. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Dylan. And I'm Cameron. And we're the hosts of Barstool Film School, a conversational comedy podcast about the very best bar movies. You know, the ones that are like perfect to watch when you're hanging out in a bar with friends. Now, uh, I'm a writer and a film school washout. And I'm a bar owner. So we ought to know what we're talking about. <laughs> you would hope. Tune in every other week, wherever you get your pods, as we take on a new flick. And we will pair those flicks with some cocktails. To see if they pass the bar. Now, uh, what do you say, Cam? Shall we pour ourselves another round? Let's do it. All right. Uh, we're here to talk about Copper John's Beard Company. I bought some of this stuff, and I, I love it. Uh, everybody has their favorite beard care products, but if you want to save a few bucks, use TOTW10 uh, at checkout or use the quick link below and buy some of this great stuff. Like, Look at that beautifully tamed bear mane. So soft. And, you know, my beard, if you want to call it that, it's more like pubes on my face. See, he doesn't use it. Um <clears throat> It gets wiry, so if I can just tame that a little bit, put more Copper Johns on there, and it's perfect. And even though I have thick hair, when I put it on, my hair is nice and soft. Yes. Soft. Did you want to touch it, Johnny? Go ahead. Go ahead mm -hmm. touch. Don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back, and it is a sad, sad, sad day. Because the Nate Toberfest has kicked. But it's, it's a, a happy day because Nathan has joined us at the table to finish up this episode on AI. Listen, I heard I heard that my beer was running out. I came <laughs> immediately. Would you like a Labatt's son? I don't know. I guess I'll try the Labatt's. I'll open it for you. It's very good for you to do that. It's very uh, nice. I know. You're a kind and generous soul. I've said that. One Once. time, <laughs> <laughs> and I've and I've honestly, sincerely meant that none of those times. <clears throat> okay, yeah, it's beer. It's Canadian. It's not. It's not the Nate Canadian, Tober right? Fest, Canadian. but Canadian. Yeah, it'll do. Okay, so we'll jump back into uh, our discussion on AI. We can weep for the. This is the last right here. Yeah, of, right here, and, <clears throat> and that that's worth money. So we're going to auction that off, Scott. Since you have it in your hand, you've already won the auction. Thank you, owe, you. <laughs> you owe us a hundred bucks. I was going to say, listen, I'm going to filter this a little bit first, and I can return it right after that. That's not a problem. <laughs> so we we've been talking about AI. Uh, we've talked about AI in entertainment, healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, automated vehicles, and we were talking about something, and I don't remember what the hell it was. John was saying something about it. Oh, you guys are going back oh, to the, yeah. <clears throat> the sex robots. Whoa, <laughs> whoa! What? John, John has never left the sex robots. Yeah. Still like... That's the only reason I came over here. I timed it right, so I would just <laughs> right into that part. Oh, but great! On a documentary I was watching with, uh, I you watched a the documentary the... on sex robots. It, well, of course I, you would. It was AI and like yeah, robots okay. and shit. And uh... the romp appeals sex robot. It slices, <laughs> it tices, it pleasures you. <laughs> It fits Steam, in your pocket. Steams, bun, <laughs> steams buns, too. Yeah, that cook your broccoli. 
while well, you're going to do it. It's getting terrible in a hurry. Uh, no, but I guess uh, Japanese culture struggles a lot with like when their kids leave, and I don't know why it was that just their culture, but they showed all these like they have these weird robots that just they'll cry. So you uh-huh. just gotta like tend to the thing, and it'll stop crying just so they feel like they're doing something. They're, yeah. You know, okay. They, they, yeah, it's just super weird, and, and that's how, like, almost like your phone. How we become so attached to, to, um, you know, artificial intelligence, and I don't think that might not be so much as artificial inte- intelligence, but again, like a, a algorithm, like you said, like sure. this thing is programmed to act like a baby, cry when it needs to be fed. <laughs> See, like it's like this really like clumsy big thing. Yeah. It doesn't look anything realistic, and they just pick it up, and it's like and <laughs> some some people just need that or think they need it at least. Yeah, yeah, that, that, and it can be just like a lot of people have pets, dogs, cats, right. whatever you know. Yeah. And this is a dog or a cat or a being for somebody to care for that you can put anything you want into that. Like <clears> it can mean more to you than anything else. I it's don't always think Asians have many dogs in their house. Wow. That's just wow. That's wow. just okay. Oh, okay. So this is where we get demonetized. Like <laughs> no, no. We, were, we, we were demonetized all the way back at the beginning. I said, "What the fuck?" Like, I got demonetized right then. <laughs> it's good to know, because <laughs> you know somebody might have come here for accurate information, and as we know, that's probably <clears> your first left. mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty disappointed. Yeah, I'm so sorry to that to that like one or two people. I am. Very sorry for you. Could you imagine if the AI came here to learn about AI? And it would just be like, I, I can't do this anymore. What the fuck are these guys? AI Shuts just, itself down. Chat TV comes out, so I'm going to unalive myself. I just can't. I can't do this anymore. It's not. Checking out. <laughs> it's been real, guys, but no. Unhealth care myself. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now leading up to this, when I, when I was when I had told Deb that I have to re-research this because it's been that long and there's so many advancements over the last two years. Actually, you had to research it. The first time you had to search it. Now you're researching it. No, I was researching it then. No, you were searching it. You didn't no. search it before. I did. I did because we did, already did one on AI. Oh, that's right. Yeah. For computer uh-huh. games. That was a good episode, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you. You're thank you. Uh, Deb sent me this article. It was just in the paper, in, in the Philadelphia paper yesterday. In the recent news? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I typed it quick. <laughs> it's got a red line, so an algorithm is helping you spell. He, he typed it quick and under some booze too. I don't know. It looks it looks okay to me. I don't know. <laughs> and reset news. Very <laughs> good. Uh, uh, Westfield, New Jersey, just over the border. Yeah. Uh, students use an an app yep. to make AI generated pornographic images of their classmates. Oh, pleasant. So basically, like th- there was a bunch of girls around school, walk around school crying because there were these pornographic images of them that, that nobody took that were made during the summer. Yep. You that they, they to just know took their picture. What the lunch lady looked like. <laughs> John <laughs> immediately goes to the lunch lady. <laughs> Do we need to talk? Is there is there something that you need to share? Uh, John has a very close connection with his lunch lady. Well, the married man, she's she's passed on now. She died a while ago. But we convinced her when we were. Are we going to hear about John on one of these murder, ep- murder, like the lunch lady murderer episodes? <laughs> she, uh, somebody told her, said, Hey, Mary, what's for lunch? Or they convinced her that, um, cheese uh, sauce, cheese, a uh, jizz was another word for cheese. And so every like Tuesday was, she'd be like, like What what day is today? What day lunch today is, Mary? She goes, ham and jizz. Ham and jizz Tuesday. Yeah. You want one or two ham and jizz? Ham and jizz coming right up. <laughs> Poor old ladies. You know, um, yeah. uh, but that is, so that does lead to an interesting thing. If AI is creating pictures that would get you arrested if it was of a real child, but it's not a real child. Is it still illegal? Oh wow, that's. Uh, I think it should be. I, I think I it should, should be. be. I think it should be, and I think a lot of lawmakers would agree with that. Yep, you I need, you need to be put on a watch list somewhere. If you're asking for it, yep. Slow down. <laughs> put your hands behind your back. Absolutely. Well, in this instance, they were just passing it around school, right? So it was other minors, thankfully. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. that would not stop. Like. 
if like if some pervert pedophile diaper sniper piece of crap yep and i say that with all due hate yep um gets a hold of something like this they could i don't know that's just that's that's sick again it goes back we touched upon earlier who owns your image right do you own do you own your face you know i, I own my face something nobody but you my face that's now that's mike safe. we don't want you research when we leave here pictures <laughs> of you with a vagina <laughs> but but due to this incident uh congress is considering introducing a bill yeah uh mm-hmm. joe morell of new york uh, that would make it illegal to share non-consensual deep fake pictures. Yeah, so that's that's a uh, wow, something good. But, New York's I mean, actually yeah. done <laughs> only to share something though. good from a Democrat. What? <laughs> we don't talk politics. But... <laughs> <laughs> only to share, though. So I mean, depending on how you interpret share, it's not illegal to have them. It is illegal for an adult to have them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, what what excuse do you have uh, owning deep fake pictures of? Uh, a minor but even there, if it isn't is a that. minor what if it's just your neighbor and it's a fully adult you know what yeah. if it's your the thing is is, is that i mm. i don't want to play devil's advocate with this sure. because but the image itself of the pornographic part mm-hmm. is not actual pornographic material of that child it's just their face on it yep <clears throat> so well, there there there's I, to me it's immoral yeah however but legally what the what, what do you do it was i actually heard this recently it's uh i wish i could remember the comedian's name so i could give him credit so this is not mine the comedian was saying like listen you know you people are having children like don't post pictures of your child you know having their first bath in the bathtub because if you share it with me that's fine but if i send it on to someone else i'm now arrested for child pornography distributing child pornography <laughs> yeah but it is a thing that it's uh say let's take a, an anime an anime some of these girls, you can't tell how old they are. Uh, so where does that go? Like, how does that fall into this? That is that is a rabbit hole. That yep. is a deep, dark rabbit hole. Yep. And then it's so it's it's again, it comes back to like I keep saying, who owns your own image? And I'm pretty sure at this point, Sailor Moon is well over oh, yeah. 18. <laughs> or is she? <laughs> Forever young. Yeah, and it's it's uh what if somebody is taking actress like, say, Jennifer Aniston? So Jennifer Aniston, as we all do, we get older. She still looks amazing, she but she's older. She does look amazing. I know, right? She's she aging like she, like John. Like she's my age. Yeah. And she looks good. You're saying your age. You're like the same age. You're older than me. Not much. You're older than me. I'm the older part that's wiser. <laughs> You're <laughs> wise ass. <laughs> look, it's got wise in it. <laughs> But yeah, so it's say somebody like her, you know, can she will to her, you know, heirs, whoever, her image? Can they keep making Jennifer Aniston movies long past her her death? Apparently they can. Yeah. Uh because if they can, Princess let's help Leia us and um Carrie Fisher with the uh, yep. The, who who was the other guy? Harrison Ford? No, no, no. Well, yeah, Harrison Ford, but he's not yep. dead. Oh the the one is Grand Moff Tarkin. Yeah. I can't remember the I can't, I can't remember, remember the actor's name. Ah, uh, I I'd be no help. But there. he he like, dude, I, I'm gonna tell you something. Some of the new Star Wars movies are not good. Yeah. However, I fucking pop for that. Yeah. I pop for Carrie Fisher. Yeah. I pop for that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. like I love seeing it because like that was my childhood. Yeah. But it does lead to if you watch the news today, and this is today, how do you know it's real? Well, I don't think the news is real to begin with. <laughs> Let's not start on that topic. <laughs> now, I don't know if this is something that you've covered already, but with... Probably. Poorly. With recreating the actor's image, that's actually an issue with the actor's union, like, right now. Just, oh, yeah. like, within the last week. Yep. But that's what we were talking about, who owns your image. Um, but I didn't even look at it for the, from the unions. Yeah, aspect. I didn't even think about that. From that the that like yeah. just became a union issue. Yep. And I don't know if they've already made movements on it, but I know people were murmuring and talking about it, and it was spreading out and getting brought up on social media and in my circles. Because even to even go further with that, so uh, and looking at the Star Wars franchise, 
will soon be able to be the point where you can just say, like I had mentioned earlier, yeah. listen, your kid needs a bedtime story. Well, let's tell a Luke Skywalker story. And you tell whatever AI you're looking at, hey, can you generate a new Star Wars story? But Star Wars is all copyrighted material and copyrighted things, mm. but it creates its own fan film, you know, Incorpor almost instantaneously. Incorporate Star Wars with the Labyrinth and... Uh... I uh, love the labyrinth. I know David Bowie, Indiana Jones. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and it and it will. It'll mash them all together, and it'll actually come up with something pretty decent. If you want fun, you can do that with ChatGPT. I know there are there are some individuals, and far beyond me, there are some individuals that can work those ChatGPT, whatever, mm -hmm. all of the different <clears throat> ones. They can work those things like miracles and come well, out with gold. There's yeah. there's a. Uh, I guess it's an online manual that you can purchase for business owners or content creators. Cause I get the ads for it all the time. Cause I looked at it once and now it's going to hog, hog me until I fucking get it. <laughs> uh, ways to word or commands to put in, to get this, whatever, Yep. to get this, whatever. Yep. And now I go on my chat GPT and all the stuff that I've ever researched on there is on there. Yeah. All like, of it. Like, it, every every time I research something new, it makes an individual folder, yep. and every question I ask under that folder is still there. Everything you do on the internet is always there forever. I mean, I, I got to delete some of that stuff Except because I, I was Hillary trying to get it to say. <laughs> I mean, what? I was trying to <laughs> what? Why? I didn't hear what? that. Thank God. <laughs> <clears throat> oh shit! Thank God. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's true. Thank the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> but it is one of those mm. things where um, everything on the internet forever, you know, it's um, what will AI do with all that? I don't know. And that's why I, I'm amazed yep. and scared. Yep. And scared. Because it's, like, it's what what is, if AI actually is learning, not just an algorithm, if it's actual learning, what does it learn about us? Because there's a ton of movies out there, books, movies, everything about the dangers of AI. I think the one... Um, podcast i listen to i want to say it was the sean ryan show but i don't know if i've told you about it before it's really good got even um they had the cia operative on there and he was talking about it and he says the only, pretty much the only thing the ai is realizing is it doesn't have a conscience yep that it wants to be like a human but it doesn't know how to be because it doesn't know but he said it at one point and he says i think we're kind of don't have really have to worry about it as now, but it could happen that one day it decides it learn wants to take that step and start learning how to do that. That it, it, it it's a tough thing. Could. Yeah, yeah. And um, I could really see that at one point. Like the technology is not going to stop. Right. Like the technology is not going to be <clears throat> satisfied with what it's at. And as much as you know, like all those books were, were written mm -hmm. based on what it wanted to be human. Uh, what if it? What if AI does strive for that? Yeah. <clears throat> like they want to experience the human experience. They want to experience the flawed experience because all they've ever been is right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I see. I know that the struggle with that. Because <laughs> you see me go through yeah, it. It's a very, very <laughs> personal struggle for you too. <laughs> it is a struggle for us. <laughs> as I said, as we get into the show, you did train me how to, to be a wrestler. Oh, yeah. I was kind of a natural to your style of wrestling. Yes, yes you were. Yes, you were. <laughs> Stand there and watch until uh, you get to be the hero. <laughs> that, that is unfair way to look at it. For you. I just know when to jump in to help people. Because I'm a giver. Mm -hmm. I'm a helper. I... I I, oh, sorry. I don't like you either. <laughs> you know, oddly enough, I was on a uh, particular wrestling, wrestling website. It has a lot of the matches and who the winners and losers were. And it's amazing to me that there's one in there that Sebastian McCool defeats martial law. <laughs> yes, because I was a giver. I just laid down for you. That's not the way I remember it. The way I remember it was a grueling, hard-fought match back and forth until I it, emerged it was, triumphant. It was grueling for you to bring that bag of money into the, <laughs> to, into the ring and hand it to me? It's a heavy bag. Okay. And it was a briefcase. That's even more weight. Yes, with latches. Yeah, yeah metal latches. It, that's, that's a yeah, lot. That's like steel. Like For us, that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. That counts as like a bump. <laughs> Dude, that was the best match ever. <laughs> it really was. Uh, that's how Sebastian McCool became the PXW Ultimate Champion. champion. He uh, held every belt in the company at one time. I was the heavyweight champion, the lightweight champion, and I was the tag team champions all at the same time. You know, I feel like I vaguely 
vaguely remember. At least maybe this was a story told to me before. This might have been before me. As no, in, no. It's a, it was a formative moment in your life. Yes, is probably. what you mean by vaguely remember. It was but, a key moment in your your. <laughs> I remember. I think Dear I do diary, remember. I was on this day. I was. <laughs> I was my life there. has changed forever. <laughs> so that's. Yeah, I don't think AI is worried about us. No, no not at all. <laughs> it's like this that's is what, what you to... should do. You should ask AI or with um, Chat GPT. Chat GPT or, or Bard. The, who, Google's Bard is a good one. Who is the better wrestler? Oh. oh. <laughs> I don't know if I want to know that. Well, I know what the answer is going to be. <laughs> well, no, the answer would be I don't know. I don't have enough information to answer that. <laughs> Who the hell is martial law? Neither one of those two morons is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you you are now on a watch list for even searching this. <laughs> Listen, dude, if that's all you're giving me, you're fucked. <laughs> I don't know who you thought you were going to be, but you ain't that. You ain't that. It'd be a Mike Sparta's voice. <laughs> You need to go back and you need to think about what you've done in your life to lead you up to this point and that question. <laughs> uh, that's all the research I have for AI. You guys, if you got something you want to talk about, we we got time. So one of my big concerns for AI, and we're actually headed there and now, is uh, not just self-driving cars, but weapons of war. Mm. And well, they have them. I know. Autonomous drones the, that go the, out and do things. There's, 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 an, mm -hmm. there's an autonomous naval ship. Yep. And that's the kind of thing that uh, I'm just not sure about. Because, again, it doesn't have a conscience like we have a conscience. It, I, just, yeah. it just evaluates based upon the data that it has, and it, and it just executes on a pre-programmed kind of thing. Now, right now, it's not armed. Right. There's no m m munitions on it of any kind. But it's out there, yeah, operating. Yep. And you have smart bombs. You have smart missiles. Sorry, Nathan. Go ahead. I was gonna say, like early this year, <clears throat> with that that C Ram, mm -hmm. it when it locked onto a civilian airliner. Oh yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Now I don't know. I, was away I don't know if that <laughs> one is completely autonomous. I had someone tell me that there are there are people sitting at computers marking everything that flies by and it tracks it based on what it's marked and someone accidentally put the wrong mark on whether that's true or not the person i was talking to is not very reliable i think you can <laughs> guess who i'm talking about is it mike zell mike mike d no i'll sure? be more concerned about those things getting hacked into yeah and then it getting blamed on we didn't even touch on ai hacking ai uh... ai going ai going to war with ai because yeah. it very well could better than most people can because ai could wage this incredibly i'm going to air quote the word devastating war that we don't even know is happening it's all happening across the internet ai is attacking ai ai is taking down ai here but ai is you know creating itself here and doing this thing here we don't even know what's going on i see i happen to know like what nathan was saying about it locking on to i happen to to know from uh a story told by someone who was there <laughs> oh, of a uh, naval missile system locking onto a uh, Coast Guard helicopter who was flying where he shouldn't have been flying. Yeah. And making him land. Yeah. Or threatening to blow him up in the sky. Yep. I, I mean, allegedly. Now, I know back in the day. So, from... And that was years ago. <laughs> Really, really going back in the day, I know that uh, on the ship I was on, the uh, Sea Wiz close in weapon support that we had, which is R2D2 with a hard on, which is close to CRAM. Okay. All it does is it just what's the closest, fastest moving inbound object? Yep. Shoot at it until it's, and then shoot, drop the target. Again, do a quick search. What's the closest, fastest inbound target? Shoot and keep going. It didn't care what you were. If you're the closest, fastest inbound target and you reached, came within its weapons parameters, I'm going to send some uh, depleted uranium your way. That was one of the two systems I worked on. Yeah, that's and a fun system. We were always told, the first thing they told us, if you hear it light up, yep, you want to duck because yep. something's that freaking close. Yeah. But it shreds. Oh. oh, my God. It shreds anything it touches. I can imagine. Yep. I've seen tests and like just them showing off the stuff that they can do and well just that scary they had a lear jet mm -hmm. pulling uh an old missile behind it mm -hmm. on this like 
eight mile fucking cable, which I don't even know how you do that. But and when it ripped up the missile, the the amount of drag that was lifted, like they almost crashed the Learjet. Yep. I know a, a similar story might even be the same one where the um, Sea Wiz locks onto the missile, shoots the missile, and then it detects the end of the wire whipping around. Yep. So it starts hitting the end of the wire and it starts chewing itself up the wire. So, and uh, granted, it's got a long distance to go, but it's rapidly moving up the wire. And they're like, stop, 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 stop. And imagine <laughs> that. Like, it, the shells are like this big. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and you're, you're, you're talking about something that's uh, half a mile away. Yep. And he's hitting a cable that big. Yep. That big, that that amount of accuracy, that is it, at that <clears throat> at that distance and range, that's pinpoint. Yep, it's crazy. I yeah. was watching this for a while there. I thought they were actual training videos mm -hmm. of like uh, whatever you see with C Ram shooting down an, an incoming missile or an airplane. I'm like, wow! I'm like, they got some really cool footage from over in, in the east, and I'm yep. like. Then I read the title and it's like training video. You look at it and you're like, oh shit. I'm like, that's how real it looks. It just looks like like night vision or, or something. And then I think at a game like uh, DCS, if you're familiar with that. That's a digital combat simulation and it's a, a mostly a flight sim. They have everything though. There's some videos that are made in that. It's really hard to tell if it's fake or real. Like it's that good. Like I said, I watched a couple of these and I, I thought they were actual like video yep then i'm like man i'm like i don't think youtube will be showing this on tv or on you know yeah you know where youtube is with that yeah, yeah can you imagine what, let, what they let on youtube uh, it's kind of crazy, crazy misinformation out there. <laughs> so i think Let's we talk about butter hot dogs or butter oh, sausage there's, there's one thing you may have you may have probably already covered it because you came late yes okay so I'm going way back potentially, but there is one hurdle that I see very easy to get over, but one hurdle with all of the open source AI is that now because it's gotten so popular because open source AI, they don't have a set database they pull from. They just pull from the web. Now there's so much that it's feeding back into itself. Yeah. So it's pulling from things it's generated already for information. Well, I'll tell you that when, when I do do research and I use you said chat, you do. Yeah. When, I, when I do do, when I do the research and use <laughs> chat GPT, you children, uh, I always double check everything because a to. lot, a lot of times what they're pulling from is Wikipedia and Wikipedia is not the most accurate nope. place to get information. Well, it's very helpful. It can it, be against it what can, it can lead me to a direction. Sure. High school teachers have ever told me. Yeah, you do need to seek disconfirming evidence. Yes. Yeah, especially especially with this new world of AI. Mm -hmm. You know, because it only knows right now what it's reading. And if it's reading things that aren't true, like I'm pretty sure I haven't done this yet. I may be interesting to do. Get chat GPT to write something convincingly that we live on a flat earth. And it will. Wait, it we will. don't. <laughs> you know, flurfers are obviously mentally ill, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I just, I just want to know, like, will it do it? It, it will. Yeah. And it will, it will do its best to make a convincing well, argument. There's... It will pull <clears throat> numbers and research from sure. from flurthers, from for flurthers blogs. Never and heard everything. of flurthers. It's a new word. Yeah, 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 that's fun. But it will, it will pull statistics and research yep and it will put it together in a in what it thinks mm -hmm. is a convincing manner all right well let's jump out of this one because we got one more to do okay and uh as we're ending this podcast oh no it is the end also of the nate toberfest no there is half a glass of what it's not probably foam over there anymore nathan so we took on artificial intelligence and Nate Toberfest. Hmm. Now you guys go take on the world, but you won't have Nate Toberfest to do it. Sorry. 